Everything you desire is within you. How can that be? It looks like everything is out there. Mm -hmm. Many of you think that if you just got the right job, the right girl, the right house, the right break, that your life would be great. But all the greatness you seek lies within you. And until you find it inside, you will never see it manifest in the outer world. I've done it myself. I still do it sometimes. Even though I know that nothing outside will make me happy, my desire for something outside of myself becomes so strong that I lose the happiness that is within me. Because I, I deceive myself thinking that if I just got this or that, that I would be fulfilled. But fulfillment does not come from outside things. Fulfillment starts within you, and when you are fulfilled inside, then the outside things will come to you. Act as if you already have it, and you shall receive it. Believe that you already have it, and you shall receive it. A person who has what they already want is not in a wanting state. Do you know what destroys your chances of picking up that beautiful girl that you've wanted to be with for so long? Your neediness, your wanting of her. Because if you already had her, you wouldn't want her. So when you go up talking to her, your neediness or your want bleeds out. You're acting as if you want her instead of that you have her. It's really a mind trick and it's difficult, but you have to be a man of abundance. A man of abundance on the inside first. Okay, so you ask me, how do you act as if you have something or feel like you have something when you don't have it manifest in the physical world, when you actually don't have it in your hands? or when you don't have the reality you desire. That's what your mind is for. You have an envisioning part in your mind. Some people call it the third eye. I was watching a documentary the other day. Of course, you never know what to believe, but I believe it's possible. They were teaching these kids to read with a blindfold on, and they were doing it. Now, I can't prove that's true, but I tend to believe it's possible. Because you can envision the world you want with your third eye. I think it's called the perennial gland. It's been spoken about throughout the ages. So if you can envision it in your mind with your inner eyes or your inner eye, can you hear my son down there yelling at the Xbox game? <laughs> if you can envision it with that, then your subconscious mind or the, the heart of yourself doesn't know the difference between that and something that's actually happening. So if you continue to envision, if you continue to envision what you want, to visualize what you want, eventually you will feel as if you already have it. But just like with exercise in the gym, this takes time and repetition. Sometimes it takes a lot of time. Everything you have today is a reflection of what you have on the inside. You don't attract so much what you want as you attract what you are. So become the man that all men want to be like and all women want to be with. And how do you do that? You see yourself as that man. You pretend. You, you visualize. You imagine. You daydream. Now, you can't just daydream and imagine and visualize. Can you guys hear that? Listen to him. Five, six kids in the house. This <laughs> He's really good at what he does. <laughs> but he gets a little wound up there. But hey, you got to go with the flow, right? I'm about to tell him to shut the hell up. <laughs> I didn't tell him I was making a video. Back to the story here. So as you visualize yourself being, having, and doing everything that you want, that will come intuitive nudges for you to take action. As I said, you can't just daydream and expect it to happen. 
You can daydream and visualize constructively, but you will have to take action. Now, there are some things that have come to me without any action. Well, I can't say without any action on my part because I may have had to answer the phone or accept something to receive it, but that has actually happened for me. And in this case, the more you visualize yourself being the man that you want to be, let's say the man that all the women want to be with, there will be opportunities that will arise. Women will put themselves in your vicinity now, and you will think, man, I got to say something to her. And you have to act on that right now immediately. Don't think about it. That's where you screw up. You stop and you think, well, is she with that guy over there? Oh, man, she's awful fine. Why would she want anything to do with me? That is your self-sabotage, your self-esteem, low self-worth, low self-esteem. If you think you're not good enough for her, ask yourself this. Are you good enough for yourself? Are you good enough for yourself? Honestly, ask yourself that. Look back over your past. Have you had opportunities which you self-sabotaged, you destroyed, and you wondered why you did that? You did that because you felt like you didn't deserve it. I've done it more than once, even after I recognized I do it. It's so subtle, but you have to contemplate your life. You have to be aware of what you're doing. Be aware of what you're thinking. Be aware of the actions you're taking. Evaluate your actions during the day. Evaluate your thinking. Self-contemplation is one of the great characteristics of some of the greatest men who have ever lived. Because until you get right on the inside, until you can, let me see, take inventory of what's going on within you, you'll never be able to experience the life that you desire or the life that you came here to live. Most of us, if not all of us are living far below our potential. What is the difference between you and the greatest player you've ever known? Thoughts and actions. It's his thinking and his actions result from his thoughts. That's the only difference. And guess what? You have complete control over what you think. But it's the strength of the will that you use to exercise that complete control. I'm doing a video. That was my daughter, not my son yelling. So the strength of the will, that's where willpower comes in. You have, the, have to use your willpower to control the direction of your thinking. If you start becoming afraid about something, let's say approaching that girl, then you have to immediately stop that by subjecting another thought into its place. A thought of courage, a thought of success, a thought of what you desire instead of what you fear. Here's what many people do. What if she rejects me? What if she's got a boyfriend? What if she's married? What if she's busy? What if she's in a bad mood? Why don't you take the what ifs and turn them around? What if she thinks I'm the best guy she's ever seen? What if she thinks I'm handsome as hell? What if she's so attracted to me after I talked to her that she asked me for my number? Now that sounds ridiculous, but it's no more ridiculous than these what ifs you put out there that never happen. And one of the reasons they'll never happen in this case is because you won't approach her. You'll talk yourself out of it. You'll rationalize yourself out of it. And when you walk away and you didn't take any action on the opportunity that had arisen as a result of your visualization, your pretending, your daydreaming, you'll feel like a piece of crap because you didn't take action. As a man, you didn't show up. And you, as a man, your job is to show up. Show up. And you'll never do that if you can't walk through the fear. So one of the things you can do in your visualizations is see yourself standing there and the girl comes out of the building and think of yourself thinking about wanting to talk to her and also visualize and think about yourself starting to rationalize not talking to her but see yourself, no, I'm talking to her and stepping up there and walking up to her and saying hi. And she says hi and smiles. There you go. You can visualize yourself into a positive outcome. And when the time comes, you'll take that action subconsciously. That's how you program your subconscious mind. 
which determines 95% of what you do during the day. I had an experience in the store the other day. I walked in there, I might have told this the other day, and of course I was dressed in my work uniform, painter's clothes, I'm a painting contractor. And I was dirty, looked like crap. Okay, when I go out, I dress like this, when I'm not working. So I walk in there to get, uh, what was I going to get? Some, something, was I looking for tea? I think I was looking for tea. And there was this good looking girl standing there looking at the sugar on the other side or something. But she was standing in my way, I couldn't see the tea. So I walked up there and I said, hi. And she said, hi. She said hi like she actually thought I just was going to talk to her. <laughs> and I wasn't thinking about anything but tea. And I thought, eh, she's pretty attractive. I said, uh, you're in my way, I can't see the tea. Oh, I'm sorry. And then she immediately got out and walked away. And then afterwards, I thought, ah, that girl said hi like she was, how would I say, um, open to some kind of uh, conversation with me but I didn't recognize it because I was so focused on trying to get this certain kind of tea that I couldn't find at the other store. So actually there was an opportunity there for me, but I was so focused on the tea that I didn't think about it until after she was gone. So these things happen too. So you must be aware that when you're, and I haven't been visualizing to meet anybody up here really, but you have to be aware that these opportunities are going to arise and you need to take advantage of them. I didn't, like I said, I was too focused on my tea. But these are the things that will happen. But when you are focused on what you desire, you'll, you'll be aware of these things. Sometimes you'll miss them like I did there. But when you miss them, it will make you, it will help you to be easier. How do I say, it will help you to recognize them easier in the future. Because that's what's happened. The world will conform itself to your way of, to, to your, uh, to, the way of your dominant thinking, your dominant thoughts. And as I said, you need to think about what you're thinking about. Are you aware of what you're thinking about during the day? Are you thinking thoughts of defeat, lack, um, scarcity? Then that's what you're going to create in your world. Around here where I live, I, I heard the other day that the average weight of a woman in the U.S. is 175 pounds. Now, I like thin, in-shape women. So around here, there's not very many thin, in-shape women. But I'm very aware that my perception of how things are around here, even though that's factual, limits me. And I don't see the, the women that are good-looking, that are to my taste, because I believe there's hardly any women around here. What that does, it blocks out your view of what is really there. We have a reticular activating system. What that is, is, is whatever you, you're like a, like a um, heat seeking missile. Whatever you have in your dominant thinking is what you're going to see and be attracted to in your world. It's like when you buy a red Impala. Before you bought that red Impala, you never saw any red Impalas around. But now all of a sudden, everywhere you look, there are red Impalas. Were they there before? Yes, they were but you didn't see them. Now you're aware of them because you have one. It's in your system. And it's the same way as what I'm talking about. If I say there's no girls around here, they're all overweight. I will not see the ones that, that are, are in shape, the ones that I like, the ones that I'm attracted to, because I have it in my mind that there aren't any girls around here. Now that's the way it works. So if you think the girls aren't going to like you, but you make yourself cold approach girls anyway, you will only approach girls that are going to give you a negative reply or a negative response, or you will have negative experiences because you think there's something wrong with you. You're not tall enough, you're not shape enough, you're not rich enough, etc., etc., etc. Now you can make yourself a high value man, but the importance of that is not so much that you're high value to other people. You have to feel like a high value man. Because I've got women when I had no money, when I had money, when I had a little money, when I had a lot of money. It really doesn't matter. It's how you feel about yourself. I felt as though I was a high value man when I was in my teens. And even though I just partied and drank and rode my Harley and fought and did all those things there. And guess what? I was treated as such. And there have been times in my life where I felt like I was a nothing. I couldn't buy a date. My friends would see and say, man, you're the man. What's the problem? The problem was 
I didn't feel I had any value at that time. So the high value is not so much an outer uh, projection as it is, well, it projects from inside of you to the outer world, but it's how you feel on the inside. That's why so many people take a few drinks and they can pick up women, but sober they can't do it. Because once they drink, they feel good about themselves. It takes away those fears, those inhibitions, those worries, that guilt, that shame. It depresses all that down and they feel like they would normally feel if they had a good, clean conscience. That's one of the important things of maintaining your inner sanctity, of being centered in yourself. I find a belief in a higher power, God, if you like, very important also. Because when things don't go my way, I realize that there's a power greater than me, the higher self, that can see things I can't see. It can see the big picture. And so this helps me, I can trust that to know that maybe if I didn't get to pick up that girl or she ignored me or, or maybe I didn't get that job, uh, I had a deal going and it fell through, that this is actually for my greater good. Now I have a dog scratching at the door. <laughs> Never a dull moment here, I'm telling you, but I love it. My life is great. <laughs> And I'm going to have to go do something with the dog. I think it's worse than my son yelling downstairs. Anyway, like and subscribe. Thanks for joining me. And thank you to my 1,625 subscribers. We are growing fast. I'm great to, it's great to have you here with me. I appreciate you guys. Um, and we're going to grow together. And hopefully I can pass on to you what was passed on to me by my old mentor long ago. That's what he told me to do. He said, when you get big and strong like me, and just pass this on to others like it was passed on to me. And that's what I'm doing, fulfilling his, uh, his command to me. So take care, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.